Okay, uh, so uh, this is Dr. Morton, and I'm going to record. Uh, this is sort of a help video for the lab. I'll also record a, a lab guide, but uh, so we'll see. It's kind of an experiment. We'll see how this works. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, set up a project and show you how you can do that using the the help system, uh, the configuration tools that are built into. Uh, uh, MCU Expresso. They're actually pretty good and I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with them. The tools that were in Code Warrior were not nearly as, uh, as user friendly as these are. So I think, I think you'll agree with me when you get a little experience with them. It's gonna feel, it's gonna feel bad at first because, uh, you know, the, the expressions are complicated and, you know, it's easy to get confused. But, uh, I think if you follow on with me, you'll be fine, and then you'll be off and running. Okay, so here's MCU uh, Expresso, and I guess I'm going to move this a little bit like that. And um, so, uh, and here's my little mouse. So what we're going to do, I'm, this is my practice one that I just did. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to close this project. You can use close project by right-clicking and going down there, or... You can highlight it, and you can go up here to Project Menu and pull down and hit Close Project. And then, yes, I'm going to save the changes to my other stuff. All right, and then I'm also going to, yeah. So that closes everything. I, I don't, I don't think you have to close everything, but I think if you do close everything, you'll be happy. Uh, and let's see, I'm going to close this one too. And then, actually, I think what I will do though is I'll go back here and I'll, and I'll. I'm going to open this one just for a little bit. I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to copy the, uh, the file so I can see it when I'm doing this next one, and that'll just help me to avoid uh, problems. I actually just need just need uh, a couple lines here. Okay, I'll just do this, and then I'm going to pull this up. And we'll go down here, and we'll do this. And then I'm going to put this over here where I can refer to it if I need to. And um, yeah, all right. Now I'm going to now I am going to close this. Close project. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to get rid of that. All right. Now, so to do this, uh, it's probably best to work in this quick start window down here. You don't have to. Uh, there's pros and cons to everything, but I'm just going to, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hit new project and it brings this menu up. This is the SDK and what it does, it lets me select one of the SDKs I have loaded. And in this case, I have loaded the Freedom Board KL25Z. So here it is. And uh, they also have some other things where you, there are hats that are available, but we don't have these. So so here's our KL25Z Freedom Board. So I'm just going to click that. That's good. I don't have to do the installed MPUs because uh, it, we are, it's it's already a generic M0 plus. But uh, so then you go down here and you hit Next. Now in this case, we we can add uh, we can change we can add an RTOS if we want, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to do bare metal. Uh, we can pick some drivers if we need them but I, I don't need any special drivers for this. We will for additional labs. And then, uh, then here's some other drivers we can pick. And then, uh, uh, and then, uh, uh, let's see, drivers. Yeah, we'll come back to this in a second. Well, yeah, uh, but what I want you to notice is there's a check by clock driver. There's a check by common driver. There's a check by flash, a check by GPIO, a check by uh, low power, uh, SCI and a check by the port driver and a check by the uh, SMC driver and a check by the UART driver. So these drivers are already available to us and uh, so because this is more than what I need uh, I'm not gonna I'm not I don't need any additional drivers. If I were, were going to use the A to D, the ADC I could click that. If I was going to use the comparator this the D to A, I could use this if I were going to do some DMA stuff uh, and any of these other things. Um, the low power t uh, timer, the, program, uh, the peripheral interrupt timer, 
and I don't know some of these uh, the real-time clock uh, SPI I squared C uh, the touch sensing module any of those things then I would have to also cl click them uh, let's see is is the I, I don't think I squared C is checked on here maybe that oh yeah there's I squared C no it's not checked so so but I everything I need for this lab is checked already all right now notice finish is not highlighted so you sit here and you're staring at it and you're wondering what what do I do next because finish doesn't show up it's really confusing finish won't show up until you put in a name they give you this default name but we don't want to do that and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do uh, M I C R O 2 lab 3 maybe I did an underscore with that underscore lab 3 and then I'm going to do a suffix, and this is my second go at it, and I'm going to do a suffix of B. Now that I put in a name for my project, I do get a finish command down here. Or, if, yeah, finish button lights up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish. Now it's going to generate all the stuff that's pre-selected, and that's going to include the UART, which is really nice, so I can use printf statements to, to see the results from my, uh, from my uh, thing. I'm going to clear my terminal window just so it's not confusing. And I, I did, uh, so I am going to create a couple of global variables and we'll put those in. So here's the, here's what I have to begin with. Uh, I have uh, in main, well, I have some include files, uh, stdio, the board age, the peripherals age, the pin mux age, the clock config age, and the, uh, the, the, the KL25Z, uh, uh, VLK4.h and then FSL debug console. Okay, so those things are already included, uh, and I could look at them if I wanted to. I can click on these, or I can pull them up in the includes, uh, in, in the includes thing, and that stuff's all there. Um, and some of these you have to expand to see some of this, and even more. And then, uh, and then here's 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 a bunch of those. And you can look at any of those. And I, I encourage you to go back and like STDIO. You can see that's where it implements the printf and all that. All right, but I'm not going to mess with that for now. Uh, what I, I just want to focus on what we need to write to make this work. So the only thing I really need to mess with is I need to mess with my, uh, my main C program. And I need to use the, conf the, the configuration tools. So first, I'm just going to go up to the configuration tools, click on that. And I'm going to click on pins because that's what I need in this case. Uh, now, uh, what I want to do is I want to connect the, I want to set up the ports that talk to the RGB LED on the Freedom Board. Now, uh, I have a document. Uh, it's actually associated with the old, with the Lab One, uh, but I'll I'll move it to Lab Three so you can see it. And I went ahead and pulled it up, and it is uh, right here. And this document talks about uh, the Freedom Board, and it gives uh, gives schematics and some other stuff. Uh, and it shows, well, it's just one page, but it, it gives it shows you where the the LEDs are connected. Now, I'm going to use a port. Uh, so the green LED is PTB19, the red LED is PTB18, and the blue LED is PT Delta or D1. I'm going to. It turns out. Uh, the pin for PTB 19, I'm uh, sorry, for PTB 19 and 18 are not available on any of the headers. So you really can't get to those pins. But PTD1 does come out on one of the headers and you can get to it. And I'm going to use that so I can connect it to my oscilloscope. So that's why I'm going to use PTD1. But I want you to go through and play with the other uh, PTB 19 and 18, so the green and the red colors. But I'm just going to do the blue for this demonstration. Uh, might do one of the others, but for now I'm just going to do the blue. All right, so I'm going to um, I'm going to shrink this back down. So what I need then is I need port B, and I'll click on it here. And um, I need pins 18 and 19. Now notice all the available pins for this chip for port B come up, uh, and I can actually look here. Uh, and I can see what all the various selections that are, are available for these 
with these various pins. Here's the A to C channel uh, zero, single-ended eight, a single-ended nine, single-ended 12, single-ended 13. Those are the channels in the A to D converter. Touch sensing, uh, uh, touch sensing zero, channel zero, touch sensing zero, channel six, touch sensing zero, uh, channel seven, or maybe that's uh, touch sensing zero, channel eight. And then uh, here, are the, here are the B ports, PTB, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 16, 17, 18, 19. And then some of the other selections, uh, IC20, SDA, IC20, SCL. So, and, and there's uh, the, and then the uh, uh, PWM channels 1, 10, and 1 or something. So anyway, so there's various things available. Um, Here's the SPI uh, MOSI, and here's the SPI MISO. Here's UART0 receive and transmit. Now, we're using UART0 receive and transmit through port A and not through uh, port uh, uh, B, so it doesn't really matter in this case. All right, so we're just going to set up 18, check 18, and 19. Now, notice they appear down here, uh, and so that finishes all we need to do with that port. We'll come down here and configure the pins in a minute. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to set up, uh, I want to, and here's their chip. This shows all the pins and gives you things to check here. And you can see pin at port B18, uh, 18 and 19 are shown here, and then we're going to get them configured in just a minute. And uh, I, I, uh, I guess these are all the other Bs that, some of the other Bs anyway, I don't know, but anyway. Okay, so. Let's now chat. Now let's click on port D. And that's right here. And notice it brings up all the pins in D. There's eight of them in D 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And uh, we're going to use D1. So I'm going to click on that. And uh, the good news is that this one actually does come out, and I can look at it with an oscilloscope. I'm going to say done. And now uh, I turn my attention down here. So uh, so these are the actual pin numbers, pin 53, 54, and 74. Uh, and the uh, peripheral is the GPIO, B and D. And then GPIO 18, GPIO 19, GPIO 1. And the names, uh, these are going uh, to be connected to port uh, PTB18, PTB19, and PTD1. And that's how we'll refer to them. PT, PTB18 will refer to that pin. And um, uh, well, sort of. <laughs> uh, but and we could use those. We could use those distinctions directly. We'll, we'll talk about that. But the other thing we're going to do here is um, these are the labels. Now we can change the labels, and it's probably a good idea. I'll call this one red. These labels will show up in our names. This is green, and this will be blue. Now. Uh, these are the identifiers, LED red, LED green, LED blue. So sometimes you'll see the labels and how come it looks like yeah, I guess they're lined up. Okay, now there's, so sometimes you'll see them as these and sometimes you'll see them as these. Alright, uh, now the direction. We want to make these all output. So we click here, output. Click here, output. Click here, output. Now because uh, a logical zero turns them on and a logical one turns them off, I'm going to set them all to logical one to start with so they're all off. And that way I won't have funny colors. I'll just be able to see the LED I'm working with if I'm only doing one. Uh, and then I'm not going to use interrupts. I don't care about the slew rate. And um, if they had higher drive strength, I would select it, but the only uh, only possible options are low, so I'm going to just leave it at low. And we don't want to use open drain because that doesn't drive anything. All it does is pull things low, although I guess in this case that would work because these, uh, these are common anode uh, devices. Uh, and then I'm not going to use pull-ups so they're disabled, and I'm not going to use the, the passive glitch filter because I'm not using them for inputs, and I'm, yeah, so it's fine. And my slew rate can be slow, uh, uh, but there's actually no, uh, 
there's actually no, no option there anyway so um, so I'll just leave it on slow okay so that configures these now once we get all this done before we go on we need to do one other thing and here you can scroll down here and see uh, all the pins there's our UR here's PTB 18 19 and here's PTB D1 and now we've we've set these uh, we've at, changed the labels and we have identifiers that make some sense okay now I do have to come up here and hit this little box here update code if I don't update the code it doesn't change anything it doesn't really save what I've done so I do want to update the code so I'm gonna go ahead and do that update code it tells me what it's gonna do it's gonna change the uh, it's going to change under board files. It's going to change pin mux C and pin mux H, and under uh, clocks, it's going to change uh, clock config C and clock config H, and then under uh, under uh, uh, the micro two lab uh, lab three uh, B, it's going to change that configuration. All right, so that's the one we're working on. So I hit that. Now it once it updates it's going to put me back in the standard view now remember I get the choice of several views I normally like to use I like to use the C C++ view uh, but you can use any one you want the develop develop developer view is fine uh, it, it works great so now now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to modify my my C code my primary C file and you notice that there are some things to do insert other include files here to do insert other definitions and declarations here uh, and then some other things so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and insert some some variables and I'm gonna I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do some signed signed in <coughs> um, I and K and then uh, I'm so if I look down at my code oh and I have to put oh I hit a semicolon not a, I mean I hit a colon not a semicolon all right so signed in I and K now down here I already had and uh, I already defined a oh, volatile static and uh, let's see and I guess I should also make these you know, uh, I misspelled volatile so let me go down. How do you spell it? I forgot. V o l a t i l e. V o l a t i l e. There's an e on volatile. Now, uh, what? So the reason I called it volatile is because um, uh, it's uh, it it's susceptible to being changed, and the reason it's static means that uh, that it's not going to be uh, eliminated every time we. Uh, go into a loop or something and this is this is basically so that the compiler doesn't throw us a curveball and then I'm gonna eliminate the definition down here because I don't really need that anymore okay now um, and that's what it says force the counter to be placed in the memory if you didn't declare it as volatile and static then uh, it might be held on the stack or whatever and then it would go away uh, whenever uh, you left this well I don't know it might, might cause problems all right now notice a couple of things so first off now we have these are all the init functions and we'll look at some of those in a minute but down here we have a little infinite while loop and notice this this is really interesting uh, if you remember from uh, micro one the pick uh, the pick 16 f 1829 had a no op instruction and and it had the, also had the ability for inline assembly and look at this here we have uh, assembly volatile and then we have this in quotes no op so what we've actually done here is create in the middle of our C language routine an assembly language instruction called no op and that's because there is no no op in C so we have to uh, we have to create that and uh, that's an assembly language instruction that takes um, one assembly language clock cycle to execute I think and uh, and although in this in this chip in the pick every every instruction that wasn't a branch took one clock one 
uh, FOS divided by four to execute. Uh, <clears throat> on this chip, that's not true. Uh, sometimes there are several wait states associated with various instructions. And so instructions do take different lengths of time to execute. And, and so uh, it's a little harder to, you know, it takes, it's a little more complicated figuring out delays and loops because of that. Uh, but that would be true in C anyway, because we don't know how many assembly language instructions these translate into, although we can look at the disassemble listing and follow along in that if we want. Um, all right, so anyway, so here's our infinite while loop, and it increments i, and then uh, notice we do have an initial printf, and I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring this down, I'm gonna copy this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna also put this in our loop, Oh, no, actually, I'm going to put it at the end of the loop. What, I, what I'm actually going to do here is in this loop, I'm going to put a little for loop. Uh, uh, and I'm going to use, instead of i, I'm going to use the k I defined. For k uh, equals 0, uh, k uh, less than, and we'll say, uh, 32, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and then k uh, plus plus. And then we'll do continue. All right. So, so that's that's just in there for a little bit of a delay, okay. And then, uh, yeah. So we'll do that. And then, then here I'm going to uh, I'm I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to a uh, toggle the blue LED. Now, how do I do that? Well, it's a little complicated, but remember, we talked about this. We have to use the pin, uh, we, have to, we, we have to use the, the, the GPIOD pin set output register, or pin toggle output register. Uh, and we have, we have to do it, we have to change the, only the pin that we're interested in, which in this case is pin one, not pin zero, but pin one. So our instruction is gonna look like it's going to look like this. We're going to type in, uh, uh, oops, uh, so I'll put it on G P I O D. And then because we're using a structure, we're going to, we're going to, uh, refer to it. And now we can just kick, click. We have, these are our choices. And we're going to pin toggle, P-T-O-R, pin toggle, toggle output register. And then we're going to set that, we're going to set, we're going to or equal that, that to a mask. And our mask in this case is going to be one shifted one time. So that, that'll put a one, a 32-bit word with a one in pin one position, a zero in pin zero position, and zeros everywhere else. And when it ORs that mask with the pin toggle output register for port D, it's going to toggle, dang it, it's going to toggle, it's going to toggle pin 1. So that will be PTD1. And, uh, and so when it does that, uh, uh, that's going to toggle that register. And that makes it nice. We could, we could do several other pins at the same time if we wanted by putting it, by ORing additional ones. Let's say we wanted to do pin, uh, pin say, uh, I don't know whether, uh, let's say we didn't want to do another pin. So we could we could uh, OR this with say pin uh, five, or sorry, pin, uh, pin five, like that. And then that would do pin one and pin five. But we're, we don't have, I don't even know if we have a port D pin five and we don't only want to do our one blue LED. So we're just going to leave it like that. All right. Now the reason, part of the reason why I'm going to do this, and then the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to print out the value for I. So now I'm going to, now I'm going to put in the, but instead of doing hello world like this, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do uh, comma I, lowercase I, and then over here, instead of hello world, I'm just going to say uh, I equals, and then I'm going to do uh, percent D for decimal, and we'll have space there. And now I'll do a control N, and I don't know if I have to do a, 
backslash r or not, but I'm going to do it just in case. That, I can't remember if, I think an n works okay, so maybe, no, I think, I, I don't know, not sure. So at this point, I think I'm just going to leave it like that and, and it'll be okay. All right, I might not need the backslash r. Uh, maybe, okay, I'll see what, what happens if I don't use that. And then if, if it does funny things, then I'll put in the carriage return too. I think new line may be line feed, carriage return both. All right, and now um, in my setup over here in this window, uh, let's see. Why did it not like that? Okay, now. Okay, here's my freedom board. And um, you can see I have my scope probe set up here. And right now I have it plugged into port D1. That happens to be the right pin. And and you can see that because you have a, in, your, in the box where your board came, you should have a little thing like this. That, that There's that one little piece of paper in there. And it's got this in the inside and it does show you where all the pins are here so and that shows me where that pin D is and then uh, uh, then and then here's my scope right now uh, let's see can we see the scope yeah sort of uh, oh well yeah anyway we'll come back to that in a minute okay now, um, I have some other stuff there we're not using. Okay, so here's my freedom board. And maybe I'll turn this off. Yeah, you can see it better that way, I think. Okay, now, um, so, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna run the program. So let's see what happens when I do that. So in order to run it, I, it's probably best to go down here now, if you click on this, you can remember you can hold Shift down, and it'll force your program to rediscover. If for some reason you can't, uh, it doesn't find your your board. So uh, it should give you this screen. You only have to check the PE micro probes, and then it should find the Open SDA up here. Make sure that's highlighted, and then click OK. If if it doesn't, you can hit Search again, and it'll look again, and hopefully it'll find it. It usually takes a, a second or two after you plug it in for it to, for it to be uh, instantiated by Windows and be available to be found. Uh, all right, so now we'll click OK. Now it's going to save my changes, and uh, so it's going to compile it, and then in a second we're going to run it, and hopefully we'll see what happens. All right, and let, let's see now. And oh look, the blue light's blinking like a crazy, crazy thing. And if I take my camera, I'll take the other camera, and get it uncaught from whatever it's caught on. Oh crap, it's really caught on something. Oh, I did, I put it in there. Well, that's okay. Okay, uh, so now let's see. Yeah, you can see the scope, kind of. Let me. I have it, have it trapped here in a little sleeve, which I'm going to now untrap and probably regret. Um, okay, now still caught. Okay. Now we got. Okay, now. You can see, you can see. And I'll, I'll, I'll do this so we can see a few cycles of it. Uh, doesn't like it. Oh, because of the, this, the level, trigger level. So we have to raise the trigger level. Now let's do it. It should give me give us several cycles. 
Wow. Okay, here we go. Sort of. And then we'll... Okay. Now you can see. Here, here we go. Okay. So you can see we're running at about 10 hertz. And if you look at if you look at the uh, the blinking rate, you can see that's probably something close to about 10 times a second. So it's blinking. Um, and I, I, all I'm doing is putting the scope on the on the same pin that's connected to the LED. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what I'll do. Well, maybe I'll leave this up here for a minute. Okay, so let me just change it, and then I'm going to go back here. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to exit the uh, debugger by punching the red square, and I'm I'm going to go down here and and notice you can see I'm, I counted up to 3,362 blinks uh, at 10 at the rate of 10 per second, so that means I ran it at about. Uh, uh, 336 seconds, something like that. So several minutes. Um, okay, now I'm going to take out, I'm going to comment out this print command. And then I'm going to run it again. So you can hit the blue bug up here, or you can hit the blue bug down here. It wants to save my change that I made to main. And it's compiled, and now I just hit the green arrow and run it. And uh, you notice now it, it's blinking a whole lot faster. You can see down here in the oscilloscope, and uh, you can't read it, but now it's blinking at 41 hertz. And the blue light, uh, when I look at it with my naked eye, it looks like it's solid as a rock. When the camera looks like it, because the camera is scanning it so many frames per second, there's an occasional frame where it misses the, doesn't see the actual, uh, where it sees it off instead of on, and uh, and so it's missing. It, so it's it appears to blink on the camera for that reason, uh, but it's blinking, it's blinking at uh, 41 times a second, so it's blinking so fast that my naked eye fuses it to a solid, steady image. Uh, kind of interesting. Okay, so um, yeah. Now. Uh, so, so that's what I want you to do. Now, the other thing that I'll leave for you to do, I want you to change it. Uh, so how could, how could you add additional delays here uh, so that, uh, I mean, the print statement slowed it down because that print statement takes, takes a long time to execute. It's a, it's a lot of code, actually. It's probably, you know, hundreds of, probably several hundred lines of code. And so this adds quite a delay, and that's why it slows it down to 8 per second instead of 41 per second. Uh, but uh, I, could, I could put another little, uh, I could put another, uh, and, no, and notice we're already counting, uh, we're counting uh, K to 0 to 32,000 in this loop. Um, so if I didn't have this in here, let me take this out and let's see what happens. Um, so I, I'll I'll take this out now. Let's let's recompile it. We'll stop it and we'll recompile it and let's see what happens to the scope now. Save our change. And it's going to recompile. It's ready to run. I run it. And then, uh, yeah, then let's see. Yeah, it should have taken out. So let's see what happens. Um, okay. Yeah, so, uh, so now you can't, maybe you can see it. If I show this to you, can you see? I'll try and stabilize it. I'm going to get this fixed so you can see it on the screen. But anyway, 
Uh, maybe if I do this, it'll be better. Yeah, that's better. You can probably see, now you can probably see it. It is. So the frequency is right here. I can read it, but you can't. But it's one megahertz. So, and if I change the, uh, I don't, it glitches. It glitches every now and then. It it glitches. Uh, well, if I turn it way down like this, then we're going to see lots. But it's measuring one megahertz. And some of the glitches occur because. Uh, uh, it goes through that it goes through that loop uh, uh, pretty fast and counts up and then it has to reset or something I don't know anyway okay uh, so you can see now it's screaming and of course now the blue light now the blue light uh, on my camera here uh, clear even on the video looks like it's on constantly because it's blinking at a very fast rate like millions of times a second which is actually uh, well a, a million times a second for for the LED um, a million times a second is is actually fast is faster I think than the LED can actually turn on and off um, I'm actually not sure how fast I, I, I'm sure they make some fast LEDs but I think standard LEDs are a little slower than that um, but uh, I'll check that and we'll maybe really ask that later. But uh, because I know in fiber optics we have uh, LEDs that are going pretty, you know, probably gigahertz speeds. But uh, I don't think a standard LED can go that fast. I don't know. Let me uh, let me pause it. And I'm going to find out. Okay. So uh, I looked at a number of questions. So it's kind of interesting, but uh, but it's about a megahertz where you're pushing. A standard LED to pretty much its limits, but there are uh, there are certainly special LEDs made that uh, can can run up to gigahertz rates, and uh, um, and those are those are made uh, especially for fiber optics. Um, so here's a yeah a special purpose junction and bond wire geometries designed specifically to permit 800 picosecond to two nanosecond pulses, and uh, then there's even shorter pulses for um, all the way down to 50 picosecond pulses. That's pretty fast. Uh, just trying to do a little electronics to go down to uh, a 10 nanosecond pulse is quite a challenge, actually. I don't know if you've done that or not. Uh, and if you want to buy a, a pulser that can pulse uh, shorter than 10 nanoseconds, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be spending some money out of your pocket. Believe me. Um, you would think it was it wouldn't be that difficult, but it is. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah. And so uh, one of the other things that we can do is uh, uh, I think I'll do it in a later lab. I'll show you the oscillator clock. Um, it's a it takes a little bit of programming to bring it out on a pin, and uh, but interestingly, when you look at it with the scope, it's not a square wave. It's it's a it's almost a sine wave. Um, kind of interesting. Uh, because it's uh, in this chip, it's uh, the actual oscillator clock. It's it, so the way this chip works. There is a uh, if you look at the chip up here, right here, there is a uh, an eight megahertz crystal that's input. Uh, that's well, that's driven by the by the by the. Actually, I'm not sure. It's it, it's connected. It, it looks like it's a crystal that the that the chip oscillator module actually uh, does the amplification and gets it to oscillate and um, and when it does that uh, it oscillates at 8 megahertz and it's very stable but then it uses um, either a frequency locked loop or a phase lock loop to uh, scale it up to uh, 90 uh, 96 megahertz and then it divides that by 4 and that's basically your instruction clock uh, so the instruction clock then runs at about 24 megahertz, and and you can bring that clock out on a pin by uh, by setting some uh, by by writing in the registers to do that, and then you can look at it on on uh, it comes out on on port C3, and I'll, I'll show you that uh, I'll show you that maybe next week we'll put the scope on that and look at that.
Uh, but of course, it's super stable because it is crystal controlled. And so it's, it's really nice and precise. Okay, um, so what I'd want you to do is just play around with this and, and uh, I'm gonna leave it, uh, I'm gonna leave it for you to figure out. The, uh, the pins for the PTB18 uh, and PTB19 are all set up. So all you have to do is, uh, is toggle them. And uh, the other thing you might wanna do is, is add in uh, add in some more delay. Now, obviously, uh, one way you could add uh, the uh, one way we can do is add in uh, extra uh, for loops here, uh, and that can that can add a significant amount of delay. And we can actually put this for loop inside of a for loop and uh, execute it a bunch of times that way, and and achieve you know much longer delays. And I, I'm pretty sure there is a delay function uh, in this uh, C language. I don't know what it is. I'll have to look it up to figure it out. Uh, so we'll do that at some point too. Uh, and uh, we'll have to look at the compiler manual and, and, uh, and see what the, what the built-in functions are. It, it may be the same as in, uh, as in XC8 for the pick, but it probably isn't. All right, with that, uh, do your lab.